Hi, I'm Ms. Strahan. I teach grade level and pre-AP biology at Westlake. This is my 11th year teaching and my 7th year at Westlake High School. I graduated from Texas State University and I'm actually a graduate of Westlake as, graduate of Westlake as well. Um, at Texas State, I studied biochemistry at first and ended up switching my major to criminal justice with a minor in anthropology. Um, I will neither confirm nor deny that a big reason for that was CSI, but I ended up getting into education and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, on the picture on, well actually in both pictures you can see the painting of my pet Bella, my cat, but you can also see her in the bottom right picture. She does tend to make an appearance on Zoom every once in a while, which is pretty fun. Um, so yeah, that might be something to catch if, you know, during the home lessons. This is my family. This is my son, Malcolm. He's two and a half, um, and he is wild and fun and just an absolute blast. And it's been, you know, a joy having him and watching him grow up. He's messy but fun. Um, and then there's also my husband. Our bottom left picture was us at ACL last year. I'm definitely bummed that we're not going to be able to be going this year, but, you know, I also don't really want to go this year. So here's our biology course outline. This outline is the same currently for grade level and pre-AP. That's always subject to change just as this year continues to kind of be um, a fly by the seat of your pants sort of year maybe. Um, and so this is subject to change, but right now I think hopefully it should stay this way for both um, levels. The difference is going to be the actual content between grade level and pre-AP. One thing I want to kind of note about this is semester one versus semester two. Um, semester one is going to be our molecular biology semester. It's going to be um, on the molecular level. It's a lot less concrete and a lot more abstract for a lot of students and in general tends to be more difficult. We actually took ecology, which used to be our last unit of the year, and we moved it to be the first unit of the year because it tends to be a really enjoyable unit for students. It, they have prior knowledge on it. They have seen this stuff. They understand a lot of this stuff. Um, so just kind of fair warning that the content is going to start to get a little more difficult after this unit. Um, the workload shouldn't really increase much or at all, which means, you know, the amount of work assigned is probably going to be about the same as it has already currently been, but um, it just might be more difficult. So pre test preparation and stuff like that will be um, maybe more difficult and understanding might be harder. So that's a good time to also talk about uh, level changes moving from grade level to pre-AP or vice versa from pre-AP to grade level. That is allowed to happen, but um, not for too much longer. That's something you can check with your counselor. But if you're feeling, um, if your child is in grade level and maybe wants to be more challenged, there's the potential they can move up to pre-AP. And if your child's in pre-AP and um, maybe feels like the workload is too much, um, especially with everything else going on, they might want to switch to grade level. That's a very individual decision um, and something that I would be very happy to discuss with you and or your child to help make the decision that's best for your family. So please reach out to me if you are thinking of a level change. This is a QR code. Um, it's a link to my website, but also you can find my um, website through the school links. That's where you're going to find a copy of the syllabus as well as a link to the calendar. The syllabus and calendar are also linked in your child's Google Classroom. Let's talk about course materials. The first two are um, definitely applicable for being at home and the second two are more so when we get back on campus. So a charged iPad and headphones is always important to have at home. If your child is in a room by themselves, they might not need headphones. I don't wear headphones um, at home, but in class they might need that. Um, even if your child is on campus, we'll be watching videos and doing assignments like that that students can work on at their own time, so headphones are definitely a must. It's also recommended that they have a second device if possible. This isn't required, but it will make um, digital learning a lot more easy or a lot easier. Uh, for example, sometimes we do these online quizzes where they have to look at a screen I share, but they also have to answer on a screen. In class, I would project this. Um, if they only have one device, it's really hard to toggle back and forth, so it helps to have a second device. 
that can even just be their cell phone um, or it could be a laptop or another tablet. So that's something um, if possible to allocate and I know not everyone could do that but if possible that would be you know handy. Once we get back on campus there might be some more handouts. We're probably going to minimize um, the actual amount of paper products especially while some students are still remote um, but your child might take notes or things like that and so um, having some place to keep any paper would be good. And then once they're back on campus, it is recommended that your child either has a portable charger or a power cord they can plug in. I do have a class set of power cords. However, with our um, distancing restrictions, that might be something that you don't want to use as frequently and it'll have to be something that is cleaned. So um, bringing something to charge devices when needed is a good idea. All right. We're going to break down grading here. Um, this is our grading our grading categories and where grades can go. 20% um, of the days are grades are daily grades, 30% are labs, and 50% are major, which would be like tests and projects. Um, for quizzes, they, depending on um, how we structure quizzes and kind of what occurs during um, this blended learning, they might go into daily or they might go into labs. I will let you and your child know um, ahead of time before a quiz, you know, what we've decided on that. But that's something to just be aware of. I'm going to talk to you about this app, Edpuzzle. It's an app we use a lot. It's actually currently being very frustrating, but hopefully that will be fixed and we'll continue to use this. Um, this app is awesome because what we can do with this is you can, t I can take a video from YouTube, either one that's already created or something that I create myself, and it tracks students watching it so I can guarantee that all my students actually watch the video, um, which is really important if that's the main way that notes are getting across. But I can also embed questions that um, or notes that will help your child engage with the content more. So this is one of our very heavily used apps. It was heavily used before we were remote, um, but it's even more heavily used now. Here are some other class resources. Guys, you're going to find all of this in Google Classroom. Um, parents, if you are looking for these resources, you will either need to log in with your child's account or you will need to um, get on their iPad where they're already logged in. Unfortunately, due to um, kind of content privacy and stuff like that, I can't share all of our resources out on the website. It has to be through the app where the students are logged in with their school email address. But this is where every single unit at the beginning of the unit, I will put out unit notes slash slides. That's how we're doing notes right now. Um, there's not fill in the blank notes. There's not you know paper and pencil notes. Most of the notes are just provided and then there's explanation in the video that your child can always go back to and watch. Um, learning targets are let us know the goals every single unit, what we are learning about. So if you're curious, what is my child learning about right now? Check out the learning targets. There are textbook pages. Um, the whole first half of the book is already shared and I'll share out the rest of the book um, when we get to those units. And then once we start having tests, there will be a study guide and an answer key posted for all students um, that they can use. I have a YouTube channel, um, which is linked there and it's linked in Google Classroom. Miss Vaughn, another pre-AP teacher, also has a YouTube channel and sometimes we take turns making notes videos. Um, and I will link those out as students need them. So really the number one resource truly is Google Classroom. Parents, I highly recommend if you're curious um, to go check it out. There's a stream where I post daily announcements and then under the classwork tab, that's where all the resources are. So if you go check those out, you can see what your child sees. So tutorials look a little different um, because we're in this remote slash blended learning right now. Tuesdays is our science day. Every um, subject has a day of the week that is for catching up and tutorials, and that is our day. Obviously, there are things that happen other days of the week where your child would need assistance. Reach out to me in email or when we are in, uh, or Google Classroom, and then of course, if we're in person or on Zoom meetings, um, your child can always private message me or just stay after and ask for help. But I'm very flexible. The best way to contact me is email. 
This is our late work policy. So um, I do accept late work in general. I want your child to learn. That's the goal here. Um, but there needs to be some sort of consequence for it if it's a, if it's significantly late. Um, so usually it's not accept it's accepted for a maximum grade of 80, which is the mastery level um, at Westlake High School. That being said, I get that life happens. Um, sometimes there are very valid reasons why work is late. Just communicate that with me and I can be pretty flexible. Um, I've already tried to start stressing to my students that communication is key. Letting me know, you know, if you're late to Zoom, why you're late internet wasn't working, stuff like that is um, very, very helpful. So please just communicate with me if there's a reason why work isn't getting in. But I will accept late work because um, zeros are so hurtful in a 100-point grading scale. Um, so I do accept late work to a degree, obviously not like months later, <laughs> just to clarify. Here's a, just the school makeup work policy. Um, if they ha were gone for a day, they have an extra day to get stuff done. That is um, the general rule. As maybe more activities start to happen and students know they're going to be gone ahead of time, again, reach out um, to get work early and everything will be posted on Google Classroom. Here's our retest policy. This is something that um, is going to come into play as we start to have tests. But this has been our standard retest policy for the past couple years. Students can retest up to an 80, and the reason that number has been chosen is because 80 is considered mastery. Um, in pre-AP, they must keep the retest grade. In grade level, that is not the case. So what that means is, in pre-AP, if they are taking the time to retest, we expect them to do better on the retest. That's, that's the expectation. Um, in grade level, they are allowed to try to retest, and if they don't do better, they can have their original grade. Pre-AP needs to keep the retest grade. That's the idea behind that, and one of the differences between those um, two classes. Um, in both, they have to complete the retest within five school days of the classroom review, and they have to have all assignments and labs turned in. They also need to communicate with me if they want to retest. Um, so they need to say, I would like to retest, and actually schedule it out with me. So again, that all comes back to communication. Um, this last slide is about our test access policy. When we eventually start doing tests, um, the way it's worked in the past is we review them in class two to three days after the test, so every student gets to see their test again. Um, and if they want to see it a, an additional time or parents want to see it, they need to schedule a time to meet with me because tests are not allowed to be removed from the classroom. Um, we, you know, just to keep our tests secure and safe, we don't allow them to be removed. So that's it. Um, I hope I answered any questions you might have. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions or want to know anything. And I look very for I look forward to working with um, your child and getting to know your child as the year goes on. Thanks.